Well, this is from a while back, but I would assume you were sort of like, uh, you know, a favorite son uh, back in the UK. Oh, no. There's, there's been oh, some... Oh, no. Oh, no. This is an article from The Times, a big, big newspaper. Big newspaper, yeah, Murdoch owns, so he can go uh, himself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. John Oliver, the British comedy failure who makes America laugh. <laughs> Did you know this was coming? <laughs> I didn't know that headline was coming. <laughs> I knew... I knew an article was coming, because they'd said, like, you could, would you like to do uh, an interview for this? And I thought, it'll be on the front page of, uh, like, the culture supplement at the Times. I thought, that'd be great. It'd be a su nice surprise for my parents. <laughs> and then I had a conversation with this journalist, like, an hour and a half. Felt like, oh, this has gone quite well. I think we've, we've kind of hit it off. I don't think I've said anything that's not going to look bad in print. I was actually looking forward to it coming out. <laughs> and then that was the headline. <laughs> And you got the the, uh, the British people are just absolute black belts at passive aggression, and that yeah. really feels like it's yeah. a compliment, really wrapped in <laughs> concrete enforced insults. Your first on-camera job was you were in an adaptation of Charles Dickens' Bleak House. So that is actually true. And I not... know that's true. We do have to hammer home that that's true because yeah, that sounds like true. a joke you would it make. Also, it also sounds like an offensive stereotype about a British person. <laughs> You were all probably in Dickensian dramas <laughs> growing up. Sadly, I was. So, yeah, no one has really found this out here other than so, your yeah, staff. So, yeah, here's a photo. So, this is it. Yeah. So, what happened... Yeah, that's right. This is what the president has done to me. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a child with light in his eyes there. Yeah. Yeah, so... Basically, when I was six years old, there was... Uh, the BBC was shooting a costume drama called Bleak House. Uh, nearby my school, and they wanted a kid with dark hair and brown eyes. And I was two for two on that. <laughs> so, yeah, I was, I was in this, like, a very, very lavish uh, <laughs> Dickensian drama for the BBC with, like, Dame Diana Rigg. I didn't understand what anything was. I didn't yeah. know what was happening. They just said, do you want to do this? I said, is it at the same time as school? They said, yes, you'll have to leave school. <laughs> and I said, yes, before they ended that... <laughs> Conversation. Yeah, it was a very, very weird experience. Here's a here's a clip. I believe your character's name is Felix. That's is right. That... I was oh, Fe yeah. I was Felix Particle, and I I'm an orphan. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you may have seen the names of my five boys printed on a subscription list. Felix eight pence to the superannuated widows. Yes. Wow. Really good. Really good. Um, that is. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but... That is like one more element of the stereotype is that you played an orphan. <laughs> it is so offensive. I mean, like, if I'd spent half of my childhood up a chimney, that's the only way that you could make that <laughs> more reductive view of British people. <laughs> the amazing thing about that scene, the only thing I remember about it is them saying, hey, you need to act bored now. And I remember thinking, oh, that's OK, I am bored. <laughs> <laughs> My parents watched a ton of uh, PBS when you were growing up. They watched a ton of costume dramas. Every one of them, from my perspective, could have been called Bleak House. Yeah, that's, like that's... that is absolutely fair. Yeah. That's right. It's just that's, that's an all-encompassing title. <laughs> I think, I, I, actually, the only other thing I remember for that was uh, Diana Rigg, who was like one of the great British yeah. actresses. She gave me aniseed balls on set. I don't know. Uh, what are aniseed balls? You don't have aniseed balls? No. Here? No, right, because you value flavour. <laughs> but do, is, is there anyone here from Britain? <laughs> Yeah, do you remember aniseed balls? I do indeed. Yeah, were they were they pleasant to put in your face? No, they're disgusting. No, they're right. <laughs> <laughs> right, they are. They are absolutely disgusting. <laughs> and then when uh, and when you. <laughs> By the way, no, that's the most. I've never seen someone so effectively interact with an audience member on our show. <laughs> Like, you were so clear. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's just, that, that is the way that British people reminisce about their past. Do you remember that? Yes, it was awful. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Last time you were here was yes. a couple of days after uh, Prince Philip had passed away. That's right. And yes. now, obviously, you're here on the day of, of the Queen's funeral. I am, and you're yeah. sort of our, our royal correspondent by fate more than anything That's else. Right. That's right. How are, how, are you, how are you taking it all in? Thanks. Thanks, Seth. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, well, it's a difficult, it's a difficult day, Craig. You're, you're from the UK, right? I am, yeah. Sorry, sorry for our loss. <laughs> Do you know what? I didn't know her. <laughs> Wait, you guys promised me Craig knew her. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, you know, basically, whenever a senior royal dies, I will come here. Just click, <laughs> click your heels three times, <laughs> and I will be here to give it the disrespect it deserves. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. It's been a very weird time. 
in mm -hmm. Britain, this 10 days enforced mourning apparently has been very, very strange. Yes, and one of the, we were talking about this at the Emmys because we're both uh, uh, football fans. Yes. Uh, I should clarify, we're talking about soccer, which yes. was, they did not play any of those games for, or they, uh, I didn't, they, 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 kept, they kept rugby and cricket was allowed to go ahead <laughs> and football had to stop in an act of, I think, tangible class warfare. <laughs> Because of uh, the fan bases of those three I mean, sports? It's hard to, they, they will say it was for other reasons, but I think it was probably that. Yeah. I think they were, they were concerned about how football fans would respond to a minute's silence, and maybe they would not be able to go the whole minute. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the, it's the interesting thing. It's always like the question in their mind is always, well, will they behave? Not, why might they not? There's no... <laughs> There's no, no introspection or follow-up for, well, why might they decide to editorialise that quote? Yeah. Yeah. And then oh, there's also the likelihood of, of maybe a chant or two or a song that could happen. That's right, we do, we do love a song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's been a very weird 10 days. I think they had in Morrison's, the supermarket. Mm -hmm. um, a, a hashtag ad, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, here, I'm here to promote Clifford the movie and a low-grade British supermarket. <laughs> Apparently, they lowered the sound of the beeps at the checkout out of respect for the Queen dying. Well, she did. She the hated She hated beeps. She hated beeps. <laughs> As if someone would have gone in, heard the regular beep and say, have some <laughs> respect! <laughs> She's lying in state! <laughs> By the way... As is tradition, a quieter <laughs> beep is appropriate. <laughs> Super Bowl on Sunday. Yes. Uh, is that something you watch? Is that, of you course. Can, yeah. Of course. It's the greatest thing to happen to a television all year. <laughs> because in most other sports, you know, the sport is the key appeal. <laughs> and clearly that's not the case with the Super Bowl. And you can say, Pete, you are so jaded with what you do during the Super Bowl. Americans just expect fighter jets <laughs> and Lady Gaga now. You expect that as a baseline of a Super Bowl. Yeah. If it's not Gaga, it's someone of equivalent status. Mm -hmm. But it, that was a bad game. That it, was was not, not a, it was not good football. That was a bad football game. Yeah. And yet it doesn't matter, does it? Because Beyonce saved the day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you enjoyed the halftime? Of show? course, I did. Well, I did. As a British person, I found the appearance of Coldplay slightly excruciating. <laughs> yeah. <You> see, <laughs> Oh, gentlemen, no, you are not what is required here. <laughs> oh, no, they're bringing out flowers. That's the opposite of the intent of this sport. Yeah. <laughs> These men like to smash into each other until they can remember nothing in their 60s. <laughs> Your flowers and messages of love are not appropriate, <laughs> Mr. Martin. <laughs> I've never seen a Super Bowl halftime band leave the stage and just invite other bands on to take over. Yes. It was spectacular to say, oh, and here's Bruno Mars. Oh, good, here's Bruno. And here's Beyonce. Even better, <laughs> Beyonce, where's Coldplay gone? And I thought, there was a moment I thought, oh, that's really smart. Just leave. <laughs> yeah. And then Chris Martin wedges his way between them, like, <laughs> Dad dancing his way between them, going, yeah? Me too, right? Don't believe me, just watch. I like it, I'm funky. I'll get down with the funk as well. He was, he wasn't so much, he was in the middle. Yeah, he yeah. was. He wasn't in the middle, though. But he, he, he was trying to take the power position, but when you're between Beyonce <laughs> and Bruno Mars, you just look like a guy in the back seat trying to... <laughs> oh, yeah, like that, yeah. yeah. Me too. We're having fun as a three, <laughs> aren't we? As an equivalent three. A uh, gutting loss for uh, the Seahawks. Uh, yeah. The, the, the good well, people they, of they brought it on themselves. They did bring they it on themselves. They literally have no one to blame for themselves. But as a fan, you have, you know, you're, hopeless, you're helpless. Uh, well, you yeah. have had some crushing losses in the past. What sort of advice would you give to the people of Seattle today? Uh, well, it will never leave you. <laughs> it will that's, hey, to a I, we it want... will destroy your life. Hey, that's a so... little... I don't want, I want it's, last it week tonight. It will always hurt. It this is way hurt. too leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? <laughs> I don't want the leftovers. <laughs> De death comes for all of us. <laughs> We're dust in the wind yeah, of history. Yeah. In the end, the the end day, when nothing... you're on the deathbed, you, uh, you, you probably won't even think of that part. <laughs> You'll think of your family and stuff. That, that's it. No, I, no what, it's, look, it's sport, you know. Yeah. Sport, it's, even though you know logically it shouldn't hurt as much as it does, it does, and it hurts forever. You had a rough World Cup uh, England-Germany game, Well, right? England-Germany, so, yeah, two, two World Cups ago... Right. I was, it was, I was said to my wife before the game started, we were playing, England playing Germany, it was obviously not going to go well. And, uh, <laughs> and I said to her, look, 
I, I, this game, I think, is going to be bad. So you should just think about something to do afterwards, because when it goes badly, you don't want to be around this. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so England got humiliated, and, like, the final whistle sounded, and I kind of just slumped. And she, there was, a, like, an awkward pause, and she said, Oh, you know, it's just, it's just a game. <laughs> and I love you. And I said, I need to go outside now. <laughs> and I walked, I went to Central Park and I walked around the park five times. <laughs> it took three and a half hours. I literally walked it off. Wow. I did what, you know, aggressive high school coaches tell 12 year olds to do. <laughs> Just get, get out there, walk it off. I did. And it's still with me because it never goes away. It never goes away. It never goes away. In domestic uh, football, you're a Liverpool fan. I am, yeah. And uh, they had a. There you go. Oh, okay. I think they just learned now. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't going to be late to that guy's That's party right, again. Yeah. Uh, they came desperately close to winning yeah, the title. And I believe the last day was your first. Was it the first it day? It was, because you sent me a text saying, yeah. which are you more nervous about, this game or your upcoming show? Yeah. Knowing what the answer to that was, yeah. which was the game. I, thought, I felt so bad for you that you had to. Yeah. Be watching that game while you're preparing for your first Yeah, because if the show had failed, it's like, yeah, OK, shows fail. Yeah. This broke my heart a bit. This is forever. Yeah. How invested will you be in uh, the World Cup? It's so, it's, you know, it just gets to the fundamental flaw of you as a human being. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean me, but also yeah, you. Yeah, also me, yeah. Because, you know, you, you, you cannot defend the fact that the World Cup is happening in Qatar. And I am going to watch it. Yeah. And I am going to criticise it before and after. Yeah. And who knows during. Yeah. But I am going to watch it. <laughs> and what does that make me? It's some version of a kind of lower H hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> it is lower it, H. Yeah, it, I yeah, think. Lower yeah. H, lower yeah. H, not capital H. Yeah, no, I would never say that of you. <laughs> yeah, that's that the thing. I, I love the product they make yeah. so much. Just like drug cartels make a very fine cocaine. <laughs> Say, nobody ever says that about that the, the drug cartels. That's like, they hey, do. let's not forget they, they that they're an making excellent, very good cocaine. Sinaloa, yeah. I cannot say this enough, and um, this isn't sponsored content. The Sinaloa cartel <laughs> makes some of, if not yeah. the best, cocaine <laughs> around. If you're not taking <laughs> Sinaloa cocaine. Oh, now, I will say this is starting to sound like an ad, but I'm going to let you finish. <laughs> It does feel like this very, like, written, like, marketing speak. That's right. I think that's, that, that is the secret of lots of late-night shows. And, you know, people do often come on with something to sell. For me, unfortunately, <laughs> it is the fact <laughs> that the Sinaloa cartel... <laughs> I, even, even as I'm doing this bit, I'm realising there are other cartels who might not find this quite yeah. as funny. <laughs> so... <laughs> Last time we saw each other, we saw each other at a very interesting time. We saw each other the night after the election. We did. We were performing uh, for a charity event called NRDC, uh, a great environmental rights group. Yes. And let's both be honest, we, we agreed to do stand-up at this event. We sure. did not think that it would be that kind of night. No, I, when I agreed to go out anywhere yeah. months in advance of that, I wasn't thinking, bear in mind, this will be the first day of the Trump presidency. <laughs> right? Or the president Alexei. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it was, uh, you know, it was a weird evening. Comedy was not really required. No. That night. And yet there were five, we, there were five of us. Five comedians basically all saying some version of the same thing, and no one with the balls to just go on and say, let's talk about those sneakers with the wheels in the head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was like, you, usually when you have five comedians, you know, there's that sense of, hey, what are you going to do? Because I don't want to do yeah. something similar. It was no one was backstage saying, hey, I'm going to say how f up is this? But anybody exactly. else doing that? And I was also very concerned that, you know, it was, again, it's a great environmental yeah. group. But there was part of me who wanted to say, tigers may need to just move down <laughs> the pecking order for four years. <laughs> the humans are endangered again. Yeah, right. So, yeah. you know, just... <laughs> There was a reason Tiger there was a reason evolution gave tigers. That's right. That's right. Listen. That's right. They, they can fight their way back from this. <laughs> yeah. We need help. We... Where are the tigers marching around a zoo for a <laughs> tigers? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> tigers. Where were you? Yeah. Where, Where were you? you in Michigan? Wisconsin. <laughs> Not a single tiger. No tigers. Knock it on doors yeah. for Hillary in Wisconsin. Yeah. I'm assuming you get asked something that we get asked all the time, which is, uh, does Trump make your job easier? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is, it's very hard for people to understand just how viscerally upsetting that question is. Yeah. 
Because, because it doesn't, it makes it harder. My wife in the past has had to pull me away from entirely well-meaning people in the street saying, well, I guess it just writes itself, doesn't it? And I was like, I'll tell you whether it <laughs> writes itself or... <laughs> no, I'm talking to the lady. She wants to know how easy it is. I'll <laughs> tell her how easy it is. <laughs> it, no, it's, it's harder. It's harder yeah. because... Um, uh, you know, because it's it's easy to do bad comedy because you just need to repeat what he says, and that's not a joke, that's repetition. Yeah. Uh, where, whereas comedy, like especially if you want to try and do something that's uh, not just happening online all the time, is an effort. I'm not telling you something you don't already <laughs> feel with every fibre of your exhausted <laughs> being. Yeah. Uh, you uh, you do a lot of uh, deep dives on stories that are a little yeah. uncovered, but you do spend a few minutes, I feel like, covering the Trump news. Uh, at the top of your show, usually. Yeah. And it seems like you pick up, because you go on Sunday, you kind of pick up the end of the week news. Yeah, so I li we literally started thinking at one point, what time do you tape? Because uh, if it's it, probably about 5.30, right? We tape on... at 6.30, yeah, but we're done at 5.30. Exactly, yeah. so we were thinking, about like, 5.30 on a Thursday. At that point, you have dealt with the fire hose of bull <laughs> to the extent that you can. <laughs> At which point, the de depressing relay baton is put over to <laughs> us. So, from Thursday at 5.30 onwards, it's our turn to open our mouth and take that fire hose in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um... Listen to that revolting response. <laughs> Was that analogy necessary? Our colleague Jimmy Kimmel did a fantastic great. job last he night. great. Yeah, I watched him and then... Yeah. yeah awesome. He's great at it. Would you, uh, would you ever want to host an event like that? No. Yeah. And I don't... It's not even that I wouldn't want to. I don't think it would be a net benefit for anyone involved. Yeah. Because the great thing about Kimmel, right, is that he's obviously funny, but also he has, like, you confident that there is this low-lying contempt for the whole event. Yeah. There. And you know, you're confident that it's there, but he does... He somehow doesn't manage to poison the room... Yes. ..with that visible contempt. And that is a kind of magic trick I couldn't do. I could not <laughs> at any point say, it's going to be a magical night, and not say, it's not, though, is it? <laughs> These are some of the most overpraised people on Earth, and we're going to give them shiny trophies <laughs> like they're dogs. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't... It's not... No one wants it. I couldn't ever imagine you saying anything is going to be magical without you being ironic or sarcastic. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I yeah. try. Even, I, even, sometimes, even at benefit gigs, you're, you... You do, yeah, we do charity you, all that. Yeah, yeah, you're good at them. Oh, like, that's you very have, kind. You have, the, you have the Kimmel skill of not ruining everyone's evening. <laughs> I really struggle with that. <laughs> the, o the only one I can kind of do functionally is the Sesame Street gala. Oh, well, here, because Because they're, they're nice, right? The, so they need a bad guy. They need a bad cop, <laughs> and I'm willing to be Elmo's bad cop. <laughs> So they can say, oh, we're all here to have fun. And I can say, we're not, actually, Elmo. <laughs> we're here to squeeze that table of bankers and Goldman Sachs for more money than they're willing to spend. Go, go away. <laughs> D don't be here when the transaction happens, Elmo. <laughs> Mafia rules only here. Do you enjoy... Do you feel like you have a good uh, working relationship with the Muppets now based on your time at those benefits? Yeah, actually, not bad. Yeah. Like, I really love them. Yeah. I, 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 it, uh, the first time I met one, and I still can't really think of it as the puppet, I, I did something with Cookie Monster. And he was so funny. And I, I, I'd, I'd heard that one of the old writers of The Daily Show, Rich Blomquist, had met Fozzie Bear once when Chris and Charles uh, was uh, in the Muppet movie. And he'd said he wanted to meet Fozzie Bear. And so he's talking to him and he just instantly forgets there's a guy underneath him and oh, starts yeah. saying to him, I think you're the reason I got into comedy, Fozzie. <laughs> and you can feel the puppeteers and you can feel them going, oh, this is one of those conversations. OK. <laughs> oh. You're welcome, waka, waka, waka. Yeah, but he, yeah, he said, he just, like, had this very sincere monologue about, I think you've fundamentally changed the way my life has gone. I, I did a weekend update feature once with uh, Kermit, and one of my favorite photos of my time at SNL yeah. is it was during a, a rehearsal, and I'm just looking, I'm giving a note to Kermit, and it's yeah. just this picture of me talking to him like, uh, like he's listening. Yeah. And I know the dude's it's... right there, and I'm like... <laughs> It's incredible. Yeah. That is that is how amazing they are. I was doing the whole thing with the cookie monster. I never once did I look that poor guy in the face. <laughs> it's just straight away going, oh, I'm getting on really well with Cookie Monster. <laughs> it's a bit weird that this guy's around all the time. Yeah, later you say to that guy, you're like, what's it like working with Cookie Monster every day? He's like, hi, it's me. <laughs> no, it's not you. It's not you. You seem angrier. <laughs> Beyonce's also in the Lion King. Yes. So. That's right. That's... That, that is the appropriate response to the, the word Beyoncé. Yeah. Because, and that, and that is the, that's real-life royalty, Beyoncé, right? Oh, there. gotcha. 
Yeah, so like, have you met her? I would drop to my knees. <laughs> oh, you would? Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh. Don't. Please. Don't look at me, Queen. <laughs> Don't look at me, Queen. It is really... It, she's a very hard have you, person. Have you met her? But, like, only in those, like, very brief SNL sort of, like, passing moments. That counts. It counts, but you, it, it renders you wordless. Did she say hello to you? Yes. What, you yeah. met her? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't care that you're yeah. sick. All this stuff. <laughs> wow. All the, these were, these were yeah. here. Uh, How long into the process did you bail on the idea of doing guests? Really gas? quick. <laughs> We did two test shows, and HBO kept their one note after the test shows. Well, you know, you don't have to have a guest. <laughs> you could just add that time to the story. And we jumped so quickly on that, because I am, I get, you are good at talking to guests. I am, I would find it hard to fake enthusiasm for an objectively bad movie <laughs> that was being pitched in front of me. Going, there oh, are, that... you, the longer you do this job, you know there's no I, bad movies. I, I love it. <laughs> I love, I love watching you interview people <laughs> so much, just to see, I can see it. It's a, such a suppressed glint in your eye of, well, congratulations. <laughs> How dare you? Don't give up the game. <laughs> Shazam 2 looks great. No, no. Coming to a theater near you. It does look great. It does look good. It does look good. How dare you? How dare you use a recent and specific example? <laughs> I was, I swear, I, I swear to you, I swear my, my mind was going through a bunch of things and she, it was right at the front of the thought. I did, I did uh -huh. think not the best example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, the best example, but not for now. <laughs> and then I drew a blank and so I just, you're right, it's a problem. When did you make the decision to do a, a coronavirus deep dive because you didn't have a lot of plans. So, yeah, the, uh, I guess the answer to that is... Like, it was it was atypical for us, because we, we decided relatively early in our week, and we did have something else, else planned, but there, there occasionally there are weeks when, if we have something very timeless and maybe dry, that yeah. we've been working on, like, something like we've done, like, mobile home <laughs> financing in the past, yeah. there are certain weeks, like, I don't know, this week, <laughs> where it's a little harder to say... I know that, you know, coronavirus is um, spreading across the world in borderline pandemic fashion, but uh, I really need to talk about mobile home financing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really hard sell to me. You, really, you need to? You need to or you want to in a needlessly contrarian manner. So, yeah, we, we, so we decided and, uh, at the start of our working week, and so we crashed it pretty quickly. From um, and how do you feel right now? Do you think that we are suitably panicked? Do you think we're over-panicked? As people? Yeah. It's on a person-to-person -person basis. Yeah, okay. like, It depends... <laughs> And like, on, on, from a scale of one to ten, it depends what your regular level of panic is on a good day. Yeah. Me, I'm at a regular six or seven. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this, you probably have to go, like, up a notch from yeah. wherever you were. Gotcha. But not too much. That's the thing. You, you've got to try and balance. Basically, just don't be an idiot either way. Yeah. Yeah. My, oh, my wife is a, a very germ-averse to begin with. In general, right? Yeah, Before in this general. Time. Right, whereas I'm not. Yeah. So I think most of her stress... I love germs. I, lo I can't get enough of them. <laughs> Just uh, looking for a super immunity. Yeah. Lick, licking poles <laughs> in the subway. That's the way I'll I feel. I'll never die. I, I feel pretty strong about that. <laughs> I feel like my... But that's the thing. She's always calling and she's like, where are you? And I'm like, I'm at dinner. She's like, no, you're not. I can see you outside. You're in the gutters. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> Are you in Times Square again, <laughs> inhaling around Elmo? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think her bigger concern is, right. like, what I'm going to bring home, as yes, opposed to, like, her, yeah. I think, like, everyone's going to have to wrestle with their, with their darkest, stupidest instincts. Yeah. When, the, when, when, the, when my phone went off with that news alert yesterday of oh, oh, someone... That, now, there's a case in Manhattan, a woman has got coronavirus and she's self-isolating. There was that initial split second of, where is she? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, I've never kind of reached for a flaming torch that wasn't there, but... <laughs> and then, then I shut that down. I shut that down like a human being, but there was that split second of, burn her. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I also feel this... I've always felt this I way... Hope she, I hope you're fine. Yeah, yeah, of course. I, 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 I hope you're fine. Goes I realise... Yeah. I realise, in self-quarantine, yeah. and we shouldn't burn her. Yeah. We actually do, uh, our, our, uh, our ratings are almost best. They're the demographic we do the best with are people who are self-isolating. That's right, yeah. that's right. self, <laughs> self isolating emotional shut-ins. That's why I like this show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I also, you know that thing where and whenever uh, someone uh, um, gives you a stock tip, if yes. I, by the time it gets to me, it's too late. When does anyone 
won't give well, you a like... stock tip. <laughs> well, there was a... Sir, you know, I, I know I you're go, a busy driver. I always have lunch at steakhouses. <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, uh, exclusively. I take a full three-hour steakhouse lunch. <laughs> no, but, like, when, even when you see it, like, I can't believe when people watch, like, CNBC or, you know, yes, the, like, right. if you're watching the news and a guy's saying, buy this stock, it's too late, yes, right? That's I right. feel the same way about when people say, stock up on rice. Yes. Like, by the time I hear yes. it, the rice right. is gone. That's right. <laughs> No question. Yeah. No question. If, if ever advice is going out there, you, you know you are walking into the Dwayne Reed that has empty shelves. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, yeah, if but... I went now, I'd come back with, like, a one orange Gatorade. Yeah. I'd be like, it's all they had left, yeah, honey. Yeah, that's right. I don't think, yeah, for, for the stock market or for, you know, basic human hygiene, I've never moved fast enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one has ever given me a stock I, tip. You know, I, I really now, um, I shouldn't have told you, because they make, <laughs> when they give me the tips, they're like, obviously, don't tell people. <laughs> Don't tell the other talk show hosts that we're giving you these sweet, just, this sweet, sweet tip. I just don't know how I'd react if, well, if a mean. stranger came up and said, do you want a stock tip? <laughs> no! <laughs> Leave, no! And if a, if a friend told me, would you like a stock tip? I'd say, we're finished. Yeah. <laughs> a stock tip. I give, I give people John, John tips where yes. I go, don't tell him about stocks. Don't, <laughs> he doesn't want to hear about it. Welcome back. Is it, very nice to be back. It's been a while. Yeah. It's, it's been... been a while in the studio. We've talked via Zoom a few times. Yes. It's been almost exactly two years yeah. since I've been in this studio. And if people do the math, that's right before. That's sort of the eve uh -huh. of when uh, the whole city shut down. And would you, looking back at our interview, do you think we played mm. it right? Do you think we had the right uh, tenor for the moment? I don't know how many people here regularly watch interviews that we do from two years ago. but Yeah. <laughs> During that, it, we, we were having some goofs, some we were, fun. We were goofing hard. About the fact <laughs> that the first um, coronavirus case had uh, just been confirmed mm -hmm. in New York City, and goof away we were, yeah. you know. <laughs> slightly out of um, nervousness, I think, certainly... Sure, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I was certainly, doing. Certainly. <laughs> certainly. And not, not a zero amount of misplaced confidence. I remember leaving here thinking, goof's well done. Yep. Fun was had. Absolutely. I got back to my apartment building and there was an ambulance outside and I thought, I have misjudged this situation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Yeah. And it hadn't even been on TV. I was, I was literally sitting at home thinking, I don't even want to watch what I just said. Because <laughs> I think things have shifted a little. <laughs> So it is very nice to be back. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to be very careful with how confidently I predict anything. Yeah. While sitting in this chair. I think chair. it's very wise for both of us to get well out of the prediction yes. game. It is yeah. nice. It is nice.